This is Tom Bernanke, and do you have pain across the inside of your ankle? This is called posterior tibial tendonitis. There's four stages to posterior tibial tendonitis, and this is why the inside of your ankle, the number one reason why it's aching, and I'm gonna show you why you get it and the absolute five best ways to fix it at home. And I'm telling you, this will fix your pain. So posterior tibial tendonitis, that means the muscle on the inside of your ankle is hurting too much because your foot is so overworked that it turns out and the muscle is so sore. It's kind of like doing the bench press 100 times in a row, waking up sore the next morning, then having to do 100 more bench presses. It's never gonna get better. This does not mean it's a weak muscle. It's just that it's so overworked and there's easy ways to fix it. That's why you have inside of the ankle pain. People frequently come to clinic thinking it's an inside of the ankle sprain, and maybe it is. Maybe that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That means when you did a little twist, you already tweaked that weakened sore muscle and you just can't keep going anymore. Risk factors for this are hard concrete floors, standing all day, playing too many sports all day. Specifically, I'm looking at you runners, elliptical people, and long distance walkers after the winter, trying to lose weight after you haven't walked for like six months at a time, this is who it happens to. And there's a lot of easy things you can do to fix that. So symptoms are, it feels like your foot's buckling out. Your knees are buckling in. You're frequently having to change pressure from one leg to the other. When you land, your foot is twisting out. If you take your fingers and you press along the inside of your ankle, so specifically, if you look right here, you can see that there's bands coming along the inside of the foot. That's how you get rid of that pressure and pain. That can really diagnose it. When you look along the inside, you press here. That's how you know it's your posterior tibial tendon or coming up your leg. That feels like shin splints right here. So that's how you know. The last thing you can do is you could go to your podiatrist if you're still not sure. This is for diagnosis purposes. A podiatrist can take an x-ray, you make sure you're not missing anything. Do you have a spurn? Do you have a broken bone? Do you have a stress fracture? Do you have a deformity that's gonna prevent these treatments from working? There's usually random extra stuff going on that a generic video can't explain. And you know, that's what, whenever people mention stuff in the comments, that's why it's hard to answer these because people don't have an examination and it makes it impossible to answer these questions. These are the best treatments right here. So do you need surgery? The answer is 99% of the time, people do not need surgery. Unless you got hit by a truck and broke a bone, or you broke a bone another way, or unless you had a congenital deformity, you do not need surgery. So what can we do? So are injections worth it? Injections in the posterior tibial tendon aren't the best thing because it's a muscle that's overworked. An injection will make it feel better and then you might rupture it. That's why it's not a great idea and studies back this up and show this. So number three, I start from the easiest to the hardest thing. And I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. Losing weight, which everybody knows they should do, like 85% of Americans at this point, 85% of the time people are overweight, but it's the single hardest thing to do. Even if you're busting your butt to lose a couple pounds, that's like a 1% difference. That's not exciting to me. I, I'm not gonna focus on that. You know, even though everybody knows you should eat your vegetables and get healthy, that's not what's gonna solve your problems. What will solve your problems is cross training. So if you're a runner, if you're on a treadmill, if you're walking heavily, think about biking, think about swimming, think about lifting weights. I always think of uh, the WWE wrestlers, and granted, they're on some extra stuff, but here's the point. Whenever they break an ankle or rupture a ligament, they come back in phenomenal shape because they're hitting the gym instead, they're lifting weights. And whether you're 75 years old or 25 years old, you can lift weights 
very efficiently at home. You can use stuff around your house, even large books, even chairs, and you can get your muscles stronger. And this is more efficient than going for walks. There are no professional athletes or people at fitness shows that got that way by walking. Realistically, by comparison, it's a waste of time. Is it terrible for you? I would say it might actually be hurting you more than helping you. There's a great book I read called Cardio Sucks, but it's the truth. They make a great point in that book. And you know, use it to supplement your, your getting in shape, but don't make repetitively just jamming your foot into the ground your only activity because, watch this, every time you take a step, you're damaging your posterior tibial tendon, so cross train. If you're on hard floors, if you're working, we can write you a prescription for a rubber mat. We can write you a prescription for a chair. This isn't Seinfeld where that security guard fell asleep because he was sitting in a chair. This is real life. I find 75 plus percent of the time your HR department is really helpful in reducing hours, helping you sit there, get a rubber mat, getting better shoes, getting better ankle braces. There's a million creative things you could do while you gradually lose weight and have your muscles bounce back so that you get in good shape. So now onto the easy treatments. So the number one easiest treatment besides cross training and avoiding surgery and injections is get a great shoe. So here's a great shoe. Why is it great? The brand doesn't really matter, but you want a stiff back, you want a stiff sole, and you want a front that bends. And the reason is you can fit an orthotic in here. So an orthotic and a great shoe for relatively low cost, like 100 bucks or less combined, you can do get a lot of support off your posterior tibial tendon. So watch this, this is my custom orthotic. When I push down on the ankle, look at how stable it is. The muscles don't have to work hard. The bone and the joint absorb all my body weight. But watch this, when I get rid of that, oh. And people think that's a trick. I actually let people in the office do this themselves and it blows their mind and they kind of joke around about it. But look at how easy that is. It moves a little bit, but a good insert and a good shoe, the 28 bones in your foot don't have to work as hard. The ligaments, the muscles, they don't have to work as hard. You're doing a whole lot better and you're less sore. You know how you make that even better besides the shoe and the insert? By the way, these are linked below because that's always the question in the comments are what shoes or orthotics? Low cost prices, great reviews, get those. Those are down there. But also, third thing you can do is a lace-up or compression brace, also linked below. These can help. They're like 20 bucks or less for a lot of these things. I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of money and you're gonna get a whole lot better almost right away. And when I say right away, there's a little disclaimer, that means 25 to 50% better in the first month. Another 25 to 50% better in the second month. Another 25 to 50% better in the third month and you're kind of starting to forget about your pain at this point. And once you get to that point, that's when stretching and exercise makes sense. If your muscles are so sore, so specifically if your posterior tibial tendon is so sore that you can't really get up in the morning and not be sore, you shouldn't focus on strengthening it because that makes no sense. It's kind of like you're getting sore from doing too much bench press and your solution is to do even more the next day. Your muscles are just gonna get sore and you won't be able to move. But here is how you stretch and exercise. Everyone always wants to know exercise. So here it is, a massage roller stick. This is $10 or less online. Check the show notes. But you have to massage out your calf muscle, your Achilles tendon, even your plantar fascia. Studies show that doing this for 30 to 60 seconds per muscle group gives you a few hours of relaxed and flexible muscles. So even for the plantar fascia, I love to massage the plantar fascia. The idea is you're squeezing the fluid out of the ligaments, the tendons in your foot, in your calf muscle. So the ball doesn't work great anywhere except the bottom of your foot. You wanna use the massage roller stick I was using on your calf and your Achilles tendon. And you can use it on your thigh too. You want uh, loose thigh muscles, loose hamstring muscles, so there's less pressure on your calf muscle. But you could really focus time on your Achilles tendon. But you don't wanna damage it, you don't wanna hurt it. And look it, for a couple hours afterwards or a work shift afterwards, you can then stretch. So now I'm gently stretching my Achilles tendonitis. You never, and I repeat, never want to cause pain. 
If something is torn, if something is partially torn, or if you have crippling pain while stretching, stop. That means you have to heal, you might have an injury, and you have to get that checked out with your podiatrist or foot care specialist because you could be spreading and tearing further. But look at before that massage and gentle stretch, I couldn't even touch my toes. But now look at way past my toes. You know, if I really keep doing this, sometimes I can make it all the way up to my elbow. Whereas in the morning when I get up, I can't even touch my toes. That's insane. So that's how much the massage and the stretching combo does.